All right. This site called Kalanish is in the Isle of Lewis, which is in Scotland, um, north of England, very far north up there. In fact, it's at a latitude of 58 degrees north, so it's very far north. Um, and it's a very interesting site. This is where it is, you can see. So down here, this London's way down here. This is England, this is Scotland up here, Ireland over here. And this is the Isle of Lewis right here. And off the Isle of Lewis right here, there is this monument. This is zooming in on it. These are stones that were planted up. This is north, and I'll give you better pictures of it here. But the, this is what it looks like. So these people, and this was built a long time ago. This predates Stonehenge, or about the same time as Stonehenge started. We think it was built around 2900 to 2600 BC. And remember, that's about the time Stonehenge was being built too. Stonehenge reached its peak about 2500 BC. But, uh, so uh, people back in then, this was the Neolithic Age, New Stone Age uh, monuments, and they were building a lot of these stone structures. And they would take these giant stones and they would stand them up in this very deliberate pattern. Now just to give you a reference here, what they did is they made a circle here with a very tall stone in the center. And then they made a line going this way, kind of. This is a nice straight line. This side's a little bit off. There's a line going this way. And then there's two lines that are spreading out going in that direction. But for our cardinal points here, this is straight west. This is straight south. This is close to east, not exact. But this does not hit north. North would be up here. So they made this kind of opening but it doesn't align with north, but obviously they knew the cardinal points from the other one, so why would they not make that one align to the north? That's the question. All right. And so here it is when you get closer to it. You can see it's very impressive. It's kind of up on the top of a hill, a slow a rise or something here. So as you come up to it, this is just a farmhouse in the area. As you come up to it, you come up to the top and these are the stones. Not nearly as sophisticated as Stonehenge. Stonehenge, remember, they made all the stones the same height so they could put stones on top and balance them out. And they didn't have all these different size stones. Here, all they did was stand stones upright. Now they had to bury them down, but they didn't worry about the tops being the same height or anything fancy like that. Notice the stone in the center, the one sticking up there, is very, very tall. And so tall that uh, it would have been a major effort for them to put these stones in anyway kind of like Stonehenge just to get them there and to move them up now they didn't bring them from long distances like Stonehenge these stones were found in the area around there most of it was just erecting this monument in the position that uh, they did it and why would they put it in these elaborate positions so here it is down this is the corridor right here where there's the two lines here going towards the center north is actually off to the side over here and so as we go down here, we try to figure out why would they line these up? They obviously opened up to a very specific position and we think it might be astronomical and we think it might connect to the moon, which is why we talk about it here. So here it is in more details. So this direction is to the west, this is to the south, this is to the east over here. Mostly, you see this doesn't line up quite as well as that side. This center is the very tall one in the center and then this is the structure that goes off here it's definitely not to the north so if we look at this from an astronomical point of view the alignment seems to be first of all the cardinal points were obviously important to them and <clears throat> if you look down the middle of this avenue now you look down it this goes along with the major standstill of the southern moon set which means the moon setting when it's at its extreme southern declination when the sun is at its extreme southern declination. So that would be the maximum moon setting position at the winter solstice when the sun is already the lowest in the sky and the moon was at its lowest position five degrees further south than the sun. So at a negative 28 and a half position. And then you see there's a couple of stones that are outside the circle. And if you line up on those, those correspond going this way to the northern moon rise. So the major standstill of the northern moon rise when the moon was in the summer solstice. I mean the sun was at the summer solstice and the moon was 5 degrees plus that. So it would be the northern extreme of the sun on the summer solstice. So those are interesting. 
Um, obviously, equinox sunsets because that's an east-west line, and this is a meridian wall or a meridian line right here. So they definitely knew their astronomy. And then, do we have any proof that this had to line up with the moon? No, but it's intriguing. Um, and maybe to these people, the moon was that important. They watched it. You'd have to watch the thing for many, many years because you could watch it for 19 years, your 18.6 year period. It would go forward and back again, but you'd have to watch it another 18 or 19 years to see it repeat so that you knew it would do the same thing again. So you're talking a lot of time watching the moon to really truly understand it. But it's possible that these people did that. All right, that is it for Kalanish.